In the mid part of the 1800s, America was being ripped apart. Political, cultural, economic, moral differences were forcing apart the North and the South. Neighbor would turn on neighbor, brother on brother. In fewer places was this more apparent than in the border states. Some states choosing not to secede, but also not joining the Confederacy. Kentucky never seceded, even though there were many within its borders who felt Southern sympathies. Even within Nelson County, we had sons fighting fathers, brothers fighting brothers, neighbor against neighbor. We were a nation, a state, a county divided. Here we are at the end of 1862. We've had a really horrendous year in Nelson County. Horrendous not in Mother Nature's um, actions and things, but horrendous in man's actions. We have been invaded by the North. We've been invaded by the South. We have had our mail service cut off. We have had the economy helped with the Union coming in and buying goods from the local farmers and merchants. We've had the economy damaged by the fact that the railroad has been put out of commission. We couldn't ship things as much. This has been a very hard year for Nelson County and the economy and individuals. You had families who had to decide to choose sides. There was no sitting on the fence, not at this time. You might back up later, but right now you had to declare, are you a Southern sympathizer? Are you supporting the Union and the Constitution? And often you had to defend that in fights, fist fights, verbal fights, uh, the children fighting out in the schoolyard on, my pa's a Confederate soldier, well my pa's in the Union Army. And the attitude of the people of Barstown and Nelson County have changed. As events do, they have changed forever. They will never go back to how they lived and how they felt before April of 1861. During this time, too, the roads, mail, the supply lines as far as things that were essential, the doctor's care, the schools, all the things that they were taking for granted that they could have access to in this area were being threatened. All the military troops going and coming, dust, dust hung over our county because of all of the movements. You never knew, you didn't get any warning. If the Union Army was moving thousands of troops in, or John Hunt Morgan was coming through with thousands of his cavalrymen, and they all impacted the life of everyone in Nelson County. The railroad, that was a lifeline. Whether you were having to go to Louisville, or if you wanted to ship goods, even if you needed a tombstone, the tombstones were shipped on the railroad. It's out of commission. How long is it gonna to take to fix? So everyone's life had to be adjusted almost daily here. They didn't get used to it, they didn't like it, but they didn't know what else to do but live day by day, waiting for the reports. Those who had soldiers in their family, they waited for the mail to get a letter. They waited for the newspaper from Louisville to read about what's going on, not just in the, the southern states, but also what's going on in the battles in the east. Wherever your family was concerned, you were concerned. And whenever your soldier was in prison, on the battlefield, or in a hospital, the knowledge of what was going on was very important and worrying to every mother, every father here in Nelson County. When we talk about thousands of troops coming, the Union sent thousands of troops down here for the training camps. So they came from Wisconsin, and Minnesota, and Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. Now, these are new people to us. They don't talk just like we did. Uh, they have different eating habits. They're not real fond of some of the southern food, and they certainly didn't like our prices. But they came in, and they had contact with farmers, with merchants, with uh, a little social contact as they walked around the streets of Bardstown. Sometimes they caught the eye of some of the, the lovely southern belles who lived here. Uh, it wasn't uncommon after the war for one of those Union soldiers to come back here and to finish courting the girl he met when he was here during that time period. So some of our um, young ladies attracted 
the romantic attentions of those soldiers and when they came back they married and, and continue, their families continue to live here. The other thing that happened is that we were exposed to people we normally might not have been exposed to. We always had travelers through, mostly merchants or people doing business, but now we had farm boys, we had uh, tailors and, and uh, shoemakers, and we had people in the industry, we had educated uh, people who came uh, from the north and could look around and see the possibilities here. Another thing we had, we had good Kentucky whiskey. And as you know, people who come to this part of the Kentucky and sample our good Kentucky bourbon whiskey, they come back for more. And during the Civil War, we introduced this idea of the red, red liquor to a lot of young men from the North who had never had the opportunity to taste really good Kentucky bourbon whiskey. One of the most negative things that was left here was a family who lost their father. The patriarch of the family was killed, was murdered by one of these Union soldiers who came in. The serial killer, Samuel Calhoun, left his mark in our area. A very negative mark it was when he would kill William Sutherland, the distiller who lived on the New Haven Road. One of the things that people of Bardstown took for granted, which was taken away from them, was the ability to go where they wanted to, when they wanted to, and whenever they wanted to. And this was when martial law came to Bardstown in September of 1861 and stayed for four years. Looking back on 1862, the restrictions that they lived under really brought home to them the idea that their freedom had been taken away, even though they were not a southern state that had seceded. But the federal government wanted to control what was going on here, and they did it by imposing martial law or the law of the military. You couldn't uh, say what you wanted to in church. You couldn't talk about the southern southern. Uh, Army, you couldn't talk about uh, any of that. You had to be in by a certain time. A lot of your personal freedoms were restricted under the guise of uh, for your safety or for the control here of your area. So I think the, one of the biggest problems that was happening now was this sense of bitterness and frustration that was being, uh, that had been sown and now was growing and was continuing to grow every day when they could not control their lives or the lives of their families or the welfare of their families. And every day, it was less and less control and more and more bitterness.